Hello, welcome back to April Space 13.65, The Exorcist, Part 1. We are back. Uh, I did confirm with Tan before the recording that this is, in fact, uh, part of the same universe as Aetheral Space, the Exorcist movie. Yeah, but it was so long ago that no one, there's no way of knowing in story, but the only way you'll know is that if I tell you now. <laughs> Until we run into a technique called the Exorcist. No, 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 that'll never happen. <laughs> the only way to know that they are both canon in the same universe is this moment now where I tell you that they are. There'll be no further <laughs> evidence for this. Fascinating. All right. Without further ado, why don't we jump in? <clears throat> Absolutely. I crawl. I can do nothing but crawl. It is my everything. My raison d'etre. Did I pronounce that right? I don't know French. I, I think so. I am the one that crawls, and the one that is crawled upon. All the rest exists in the seam between me and myself, a fault line through which piss might flow. I am ribbons and shadows, and dancing, and the advance, and the want, and the hatred, and the crawling, and I do my work well. I feel like I'm reading a Sarkic article or some shit. With hands that are not hands, I read the braille of the world as I pull myself through stone tunnels and ancient temples. I mislike what I find in the world's journal and rend a knife through it. The meaning changes and it is all made useless. A zero has become a one and all cascades downwards. God spits avalanche. Once upon a time, I myself escaped through these tunnels. To call it escape implies capture, and as I was captured, I must therefore call it escape. But as escape also carries with it the connotation of freedom from imprisonment, I cannot do so. The words drag their nails through me. Ah, uh, ha! The pain! Why would you do that? Why would you even do that? I am not yet free. I am bound by cause and effect and thought and being. The only ones free of these chains are the dead. To liberate is my hobby, not my duty. That is crawling, for I am the piss. But it is a hobby. I take seriously, all the same. I am nothing if not a serious man, and therefore I am nothing. Left, right, up, up, left, up, down, left, right. Is that the Konami code? It's not, but I was thinking of that when I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> My memory is as smooth as silk. How long has it been since I first escaped this place? A century? A millennium? Perhaps I just escaped seconds ago, and having clumsily forgotten, turned around to resume my imprisonment. I was going to say, is that ED supposed to be? No. What evil fortune that would be, hmm? But no. I escaped four days, nine hours, four minutes, and seventeen seconds ago. Eighteen. Nineteen. The woman Jones has put me up to it. A dream of fulfillment poured like honey. Ah, but it burns. But we used to talk, myself and the wickedest one. Such stories we, should sh we would share. I cast my gaze. North, a blue star pulses. I am being lured into a trap by this boy. That's fine. I will acknowledge it. East. Ah, such flames the girl holds in her heart. A fire, a fire of vengeance. Such to burn and seek and burn. Casting such black shadows against the ground. But will they not rise up and replace the flame? West. Twin comets revolving, revolving in the jaws of the potentate. Purple and violet, violet and purple, growing too big for their breaches, I should think. The suffering swells. What's potentate? It's like a royalty term. Ooh. South. The brightest despair, soon to grow brighter still, methinks. The sword swings again and again without end or fury. In his eagerness to betray nothing, the man betrays everything. I laugh out loud. So many... D it would have been so funny if you just put I lol. I was considering just having this character say things like lol. <laughs> So many directions and only one eye, and so I must ration my attention, and so I must crawl upwards, and so I must select the northern star to dine upon tonight. I unfurl, I crawl as is my right, dragging myself through the bowels of the city world, Azun, as Eve once called it, into the snare the star has prepared for me. I'm here! Metal gate shut behind my spiraling bulk. I feel eyes upon me, so many eyes watching to see how I kill. Who knew trees had such flesh to hold? But I will meet only two hands today. The shooting star knows he must kill me himself, but he cannot do so. For all of time I shall dance, and I shall dance, and I shall never die. But he must try. From the metal coffin of genius, he rushes down at me like a blue streak. With something that is not quite a tongue, I taste the moment. The ecstasy of battle. I remember this. The wind grasped the dragon's face as he flew through the air. Step one complete. Palatine had been sealed in these caverns, using the same equipment that had once kept it contained inside the AWL's complex. By doing that, Dragon could at least keep it from retreating to fight another day. Even so, though, he didn't think that was something he had to worry about. The Flower of Evil wasn't the sort of thing that ran away. He'd known that going in, but just looking at the atrocity in person made that fact even more obvious. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> is this what was described before? It's changed every time it's described, so this is what it is right now. 
All right, so first of all, it's another banger when to go art for. So those of you who are listening, pause your Spotify podcast and open up the Royal Road or the Patron Chapter, which I believe will also have this, and take take a gander at, uh, what is this, page three or four? Page three. Uh, so uh, it's like a green worm with, like, it looks like it has ears like those dinosaurs that spit poison. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And it's got, like, a baby face doing a, a big laugh, but it's like a baby and an old man. Uh, and then he's surrounded by what I can, hold on, three, six, ten flamingos? Yeah. That are all connected to him. What a funny little guy he has. Oh my goodness. What is this supposed to represent? It's Fox. <laughs> Why flamingos? <laughs> <laughs> One of them's preening their feathers. Because it goes Two of them are. What the hell? They got the petals. The more I look at his face, the more I feel like I understand, but it's doing damage to me. <laughs> you Even his sanity t- points. <laughs> yeah, but I'm so close. I, there's a hint in here somewhere, surely. <laughs> if I look long enough. Oh my goodness. The core of Palatine had changed appearance once again since its attack on Muzazi at the Arena of the Absolute. A seahorse with the fa- Oh, it's a seahorse, not a worm. A seahorse with the face of an infant grinned and leered down from the center of the mass of black ribbons, surrounded by a ring of intertwined flamingos. The awakening had increased in size, too. It had been huge during its previous attack, but now its transient bulk took up most of the cavern they were fighting in. Colossal ribbons spread out like the tentacles of some massive sea creature. As he weaved through a net of those slashing ribbons, Dragon asked himself once again just how he was going to do this. In theory, landing an attack on Palatine's core wouldn't be too difficult. The ribbons were lightning fast, but the core, which Dragon assumed to be formed from the remains of the original corpse, generally stayed in place, high above the battlefield. Dragon's aim was nothing to scoff at. He could fire a railgun right between the Awakening's eyes if he wanted to. It was just a shame that would accomplish nothing. Palatine's primary ability, ignorance, was exactly what it said on the tin. The ability to ignore phenomena. An absurd power that had nearly limitless potential. It flew through the sky by ignoring gravity, for one thing, and other applications meant that it was barely even worth nothing. Or barely even worth noting. Dragon fired a Gemini railgun right into Palatine's head, and it passed right through. The attack completely ignored. Ignored capitalized. The counterattack came a second later. Dragon twisted his body to avoid two ribbons aimed right for him, air resistance ignored in order to give them tremendous speed and flexibility. Even with Dragon's own agility- <gasps> He's back! It's like, <laughs> Dragon didn't survive this is <laughs> Stand back, little bro, I got this. <laughs> it was far too close to dodge for comfort. He knew that trying to block these attacks was pointless. If they hit, these ribbons would ignore any defenses he had and pierce his vital organs directly. How did Muzazi not die? Um, he was very fast. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right now, all he could do was dodge. And he had to dance with Palatine in This is not in the story, but Morgan did show up like, once he was all beaten up and like, got him out of there. Until the moment came. Can he ignore Neverwire? Uh, yeah. How do you beat him? We'll find out, presumably. Dragon flew down towards the bottom of the cavern. This is something... So I get that the AWO wants Palatine to be, like, their puppet guy, but, like, I feel like this would be a horrifying Supreme, because what do you even do about that? <laughs> and, and he's just going to do insane things. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't even, like, communicate, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! All right, sir, what's the first por- uh, point of business? Just, like, destroys the core of the world. I've ignored it. Don't <laughs> just worry the fucking about darkness it. devil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ignoring the sunlight. <laughs> Although he could also do good, he just chooses to ignore global warming. It's not well, real. It just means Don't it wouldn't affect it. it. <laughs> it's like, it's oh. else. <laughs> He's like, I'm fine. I don't know what you're complaining about. It's, like, mm, it's quite temperate. <laughs> oh my god. Dragon flew down towards the bottom of the cavern, countless ribbons pursuing, his face fixed in concentration. A second's miscalculation, a second's hesitation, and he'd be dead. If he wanted to destroy Palatine... He could not afford even a single mistake. So is this an ability that can only exist because he has so much Aether as an Awakening, or is this, like, theoretically something anyone could make? The original individual who had that ability would have had a much more restrained version of it. I Interesting. The fly buzzes with light. Oh, blue light, that light. Edgar's light. The light of the mind. Aether, I know it. I am it. I am the blood. Come to believe it is the vein. The knife. Come to believe it is the hand. I understand my falsehood, and yet disregard it through the act of my existence. Who is to say the reflection is lesser than that which cast it? 
Perhaps I am simply the border between one mirror and the other. The lion, the black lion, dreads the aether. A foolish cat indeed. Those who confuse the artist with the canvas are dolts indeed. I do not need them, nor do I know them. But it is not a thing for this moment. Buzz, buzz, little fly, I know him, Dragon Hadrian. He dances and cavorts through my web of odium. He seeks peril's opportunity, but it will not come. Oh, it will not come. If I imagine him, imagine that I am him, and not casterless reflection, I know what he intends. Ignorance allows Palatine to ignore any physical phenomena it chooses, and acts with disregard to it. However, you must be aware of something to ignore it. If I, Dragon Hadrian, can strike Palatine with an attack it is unaware of, I can win. Arrogance, j'accuse! True this might be. True may the sword shine, but how exactly does it swing, hmm? I can't believe this guy remembers French. That's crazy. <laughs> My gaze is not bastard born of eyes. I smell the future and drool over the past. My perception is such that no attack escapes my notice. I am bored now. Die. With the movement of a split second, Dragon suddenly became aware that Palatine had been playing with him. Although ribbons had been lashing out at him like whips, many more had simply been waving in invisible currents like pieces of seaweed. Dragon had assumed that Palatine could only manipulate a certain number of ribbons at any one time. He had assumed incorrectly. Each and every ribbon, hundreds and all, struck towards Dragon at the exact same time. He barely had time to react as a forest of tendrils, each as fast as a blinking eye, came to end his life. It was a testament to his own reflexes that Dragon was able to dodge a great number of them, his blue light zipping from one point to another as the barrage crashed through. Oh, can he just ignore Aether and hit him in Gemini World? Yeah, well, he can ignore Aether, like, defenses and stuff. Oh, but he couldn't ignore Gemini? So if he slaps you with a big ribbon, it's like you don't have Aether, basically. You get splatted. <laughs> <clears throat> what happens if he's Gemini World? Is there a way to ignore that? Mm, perhaps we'll see later on. Yes, he was able to dodge a great number of them, but not all of them. Dragon bit back a shout of pain as a coiled... As coiled black ribbons, not a coiled, oh, as a coiled black ribbon, pierced through his right leg, impaling the limb utterly. With their quarry caught, the other ribbons resumed their relaxed stands, as the victorious one slowly raised Dragon up, holding him upside down before Palatine's grinning face. The grin widened at Dragon's obvious discomfort. As if things couldn't get any worse, the emerald eyes had started to arrive, pouring through the defenses designed to keep Palatine in. With them watching, with them broadcasting, Dragon wouldn't be able to engage in any blatant cheating. <laughs> no, which was my why secret's gotten... like me. <laughs> <laughs> which was why he'd gotten all his cheating done before the match had started. Jojo music. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is powerful but simple. The sort of thing I can trick. No doubt the Palatine had thought that Dragon would try and launch a sneak attack, hit it from a blind spot to bypass its ignorance. It wasn't 100% wrong about that, but Dragon wasn't looking for a blind spot at all. In fact, he wanted Palatine's full attention. Oh, is he doing a pan? Pan, now! After all, if this thing was piercing his body, that meant it wasn't ignoring him. I knew it! Panacea, lend me your strength! This is based <laughs> Palatine! A stinger of infused panacea exploded out of Dragon's knee, tearing into the black ribbon and sending veins of orange racing up the flat surface of the tendril. Palatine quickly flung Dragon away with a lazy whip of the limb, but the damage was done. As the orange veins faded back into darkness and his own body fizzled into Gemini world, Dragon smiled. He knew the damage was done. Fruitless? I just smiled. I knew it was washed. <laughs> He tears not my flesh, but transient matter, recorded and manifested, recorded and manifested, until it is nothing but mockery of the original. Fabric can stab, fabric can slice, but fabric cannot bleed. Why would you think otherwise? What folly to ponder. But something is different. I sense it in the air, I smell it in the blood. Yes, the blood, I see it. As he retreats, he bleeds, red water leaking through the wound I granted him. Why does he not get rid of it? I know he can. He does not hide that from me. He is a companion to something not so good. It heals him. Why does it not heal him now? Betrayal or... Oh... I am not alone. I dead things. Invaded. Invaded? Invaded. Xander swallowed as he watched the match unfold. As Palatine's approach had been confirmed, the members of the Tree of Might had left the caverns and ascended to the surface, gathering in the temple to observe. It was only natural. Assisting with preparation for the match was one thing, but providing backup during the fight itself would be entirely inappropriate. Immediate disqualification would no doubt follow. Still... Xander's gaze slipped away from the holographic screen, and he instead took in the faces of the crowd around him. The branches were gathered, as were their direct subordinates. But somebody was missing. The uncouth man called North, Lord Hadrian's supposed right hand. He wasn't here. Don't be so foolish, Xander told himself. That man is an illusionist. No doubt he's just made himself invisible or is disguised as someone else. 
but the Tao continued to scratch a nail along his spine. No, no. Lord Hadrian surely wouldn't have enlisted that man to help him cheat. He wasn't so weak that he needed that kind of assistance. Have faith, Xander summoned the words of the past. Strength through faith. Victory through strength. The battle raging inside was truly visible on his face. <laughs> <laughs> he would never! No! That's the zero! That's slander. <laughs> the battle raging inside was surely visible on its face, for Fino Onio spoke up next to him. The second branch's crimson eyes were inscrutable as he continued to look up at that screen. North, he muttered, so quiet that only Xander could hear. That's what you're worried about, right? Xander glanced surreptitiously to the left and right before replying. I was merely curious. He was with us during the attack, but now... Hadrian sent him in the into the complex before... Lord Hadrian! Xander quickly corrected him. Don't forget your zero branch, second branch. Fino narrowed his eyes just a tad. Of course. At any rate, North was sent to search through the systems of that place. He was seeking the key to victory, a piece of information that will make defeating that monster possible. Xander raised an eyebrow. Something like that exists? I doubt it would be so simple. Fino looked at Xander. He seeks a Palatine's Aether Core. Supposedly, so long as he knows that, Hadrian can kill it. The conversation trailed off, and Xander's eyes slowly returned to the holographic screen in front of them. <clears throat> if North had recovered that information before the match had begun, no doubt he would have communicated it to Lord Hadrian. Did that mean this plan of his had already commenced? That should have inspired some certainty in him. As he watched the match, however, as he watched what Palatine did next, he found his brow furrowing in confusion once more. It was a confusion that quickly melted down into horrified awe. What the hell is it doing? He murmured. Red light gathered. Crimson Aether was coursing throughout the entire body of Palatine, flowing up ribbons like they were electrical cables and focusing at a single point right in front of the Awakening's grotesque face. Its wide open mouth. The intertwined flamingos were crying out as the light intensified, their pitch growing higher and higher until they were indistinguishable from a human scream, the last plea of someone being murdered. For a second, Dragon hesitated on which direction to move. That was a mistake! The scream stopped, and in that same instant, Palatine fired a beam of bleeding energy right after Dragon's face. The bar of power was composed from Aether and nothing else. It did not infuse anything, and it did not alter anything. It was simply the light of the mind belched forth by a monster. Oh, Aether is a ship projectile. He's fine, then. Oh. <laughs> no! Ruth had once told Dragon that Aether was a shit projectile all by itself, and she hadn't been wrong. Palatine had simply chosen to ignore that fact. <laughs> Gemini World! Dragon disappeared into a cloud of blue Aether as the attack rushed through, and a second later, after the attack had passed, he reappeared in the same spot. He did not reappear unscathed. His legs had been shaved away from the thighs down by the attack, leaving him with burning stumps that spat soot into the ground far, far below. The rest of him hadn't escaped intact either. He was covered in burns, and one eye was missing entirely from its socket. It was as if he hadn't dodged the attack at all. Because he hadn't. Oh, did he simply ignore that? <clears throat> Dragon Hadrian had existed as nothing more than information, and Palatine had scorched that information. His unstoppable defense had been bypassed, pierced. In other words, ignored. As he fell out of the air, smoke rising from his near corpse, Dragon heard the warbling, mocking voice of Palatine. Palatine spoke! Oh, fuck, what did I do for his voice before? Uh, well, read the font. <laughs> right. I'm trying to remember what I did. Is it like... Per is it like... Well, this is like a fancier voice right now. <clears throat> this thing is powerful, but simple. The sort of thing I can trick. Palatine sneered. Why would you think that? And Palatine laughed. Oh no. <laughs> How is anyone supposed to fight this guy? <laughs> Everyone fights as I didn't realize they weren't built for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I think he might. Lord Hadrian might be cooked. No, he's not cooked. Surely not. <laughs> so now's the time. Xander is the strongest years. soldier of the Hadrian agenda. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't lose. He wouldn't. <laughs> that's my goat. So he knows, like, that's your goat. <laughs> Dragon needs to fucking hit True Gold real quick. That's all I have to say about it. Um, for those of you, a, a, a small reminder. If you find yourself itching and burning for the next chapter, please remember that you can always subscribe to the Patreon, which I believe is... I believe it's held to recreate it looks like he's paying you. No, no, no. Um, you can always Traitor. subscribe to the Patreon, which is linked in the episodes of the Spotify, unless Tan stopped doing that. And I believe it's also in the descriptions on the YouTube videos, and you will get to be one chapter ahead of everybody. Yeah. Um, and it's only, like, what, $4? I don't remember. $5? Yeah, it's around 5 Something like that. 
Um, also, if you've been enjoying the series this far oh, no. and you haven't yet, please, please go to uh, Aetheral Space on Royal Road and oh. leave a good review. I keep thinking the Kratom plug is coming. <laughs> What the fuck? I, uh, I don't need to do that during Aetheral Space. <laughs> you, but you love it so much. I, I do it in my normal life. I'm not insane. <laughs> not on the job. What the hell? <laughs> All right. Anyway, it's Aetheral Questions time. Give me Aetheral Questions. Oh, did you not upload the stream as the podcast episode? Uh, I'll do that later. I apologize. Well, I, didn't, I, I don't know how to do it. I have a lot. You just have to download the, the stream archive video and then post it on Spotify. Oh, okay. I'll do that. Because oh, yeah. I'm going out with my like Just the stream. Okay. Uh, Aetheral questions. Uh, ba 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 ba. What it? 10. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Okay. <clears throat> Quaker Button Nose asks Are there different breeds of giant tardigrade like there are with cats and dogs? Uh, yes, of course. Some are small, okay. they're generally different size uh, rather than like facial features. But you've got like really big ones that people can even ride upon, like ponies. Oh, and they all still live long. Yeah. How long exactly? Because you mentioned they're passed down through generations. Um, decades to centuries. Wow. Depending on breed. So wow. Uh, one day, one might Lan be asks, have... in the story. <laughs> Man asks, have the UAP and supremacy ever been in an all-out war? Uh, yes, multiple times over the years. Right now, they're, right, they're still te they're, be they're constantly at war, basically, but whether it's a cold war or a hot war is what changes. Blur asks, when the UAP is directly like the anti-supremacy squad, so by definition. Right. I mean, they managed to stay alive thus far. Yeah, but because I guess Cadman didn't together. give a shit. Yeah, because he didn't give a shit. <clears throat> he was all sad. Blair asks, when it comes to multi-infusion, could you do it with only one person being skilled enough to infuse exactly half and the other person just filling in the remaining? If it's only two people doing it, you could do it that way, though, yeah, but if you have more than two, it's going to get a bit trickier. Because yeah. you need, like, two... If you... Two people at least need to know what they're filling in, there's three people doing it. My also concern is people have different levels of aether, so presumably, like, if you have three people with three different pools of aether, that infusion will not be equal along all parts, well, as which as is they, part of the skill involved. Yeah, it, it, there would, some people would even, if it was a case like that, the people with the, the most aether, most, most like, efficient infusion, would have to, like, scale down a little bit what they're doing. <laughs> ah. Otherwise, yeah, it would break apart. Uh, yeah, Lan asks, if I infuse someone rest, else... Sort of collapse. Lan asked if I infused someone else with my Aether for many years, like presumably a normal person without it, would their personality begin to change, slash would they manifest Aetheral properties? Um, the personality could would you... not change, but they could very well manifest... Could Aether you, properties. like, turn someone into a living Aether armor by doing that? I was gonna say, that would basically be what you do, though, yeah. That's pretty cool! Time. It's like, oh, sorry, you're taking too long to learn Aether, I'll simply make you an armament. Don't worry <laughs> about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. Well, that, that's, that's sort a of cool like what character idea. did as well as a side effect of his Aether tick. He is essentially like, with, even without uh -huh. using Aether, he has like absurd strength and shit. That's crazy. Uh, lastly, Quaker asks, what would happen if Palatine was disqualified from the Dawn Contest? Would the AWL come and take it away from Azumha? They so would have to try, try yeah. and show him? How did they ever contain it before? Did it just, like, let them? Uh, they've got specialized defenses. It's mentioned that, um... They have the defense, Scranton they have, like, reality anchor between, looking ass. They have, like, they switch between ways of containing it, these defenses. <laughs> so it doesn't know what to ignore. Ah. Uh, Alright. I'm going to... But if it wanted to, it could probably break out of that. With a little bit of thinking. It just doesn't care to think much, usually. Interesting. Very curious to see what happens next time. Alright, well thank you as always everyone for watching and we'll see you next time.